everyone, this is David Stark from WatcherPass.com, your website for movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Today, I'm interviewing Joshua Zeman, the director of Sons of Sam, A Descent into Darkness. It's premiering on Netflix on Wednesday, May 5th, 2021. We're going to talk to Josh in just a second, but first, let's check out the trailer. And while you're watching, if you could like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. I'll spend a lot. Thank you. Believe to be the son of Sam. You better run for your life. They totally ignored the true story of this case. There were real questions in this case. Why do the police not investigate more? The sketches don't add up. You're not going to mistake Berkowitz for being six feet tall and blonde. Son of Sam is not over. You better run for your life. Hi, Josh. Thank you so much for joining me. This is uh, Joshua Zeman, the director of The Sons of Sam, A Descent into Darkness, which releases on Netflix on May 5th, 2021. So I guess the first question I want to ask is, uh, are you one of the Sons of Sam? No, I am not. <laughs> okay. That's good. Uh, are you the Zodiac? No, I'm not the Zodiac either. But uh, And I don't think they're the real, they're the same person either. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, this this documentary, uh, Maury goes in, down some some interesting holes. I wouldn't be surprised if, if that was a connection, but uh, it was it was a fascinating, fascinating uh, documentary. Um, it's a thanks very much. I appreciate that. You know, I always like to say that bad people like to gravitate towards each other. I think that's what it is more than kind of like organized networks per se. Yeah, and I think I think it's really interesting in the end where you, you kind of uh, like it, this film feels like or the series feels like it has kind of a, a nice arc, and towards the end you kind of get into the, you know, if you look for it, you know, you can find connections everywhere, and and maybe sometimes it's just there are these very bad people, and and maybe they do know each other, but there's not this, you know, well actually I don't want to spoil it, I don't want to spoil the, the right, right, right. series. <laughs> Um, so I guess the first question is, how did you get involved in this? I mean, I think in the documentary it says that you, that you received a package of, of Maury's research. Is that, mm -hmm. that kind of mm -hmm. how you first got tipped off of this? Or were you looking and then you, you requested that and it, it finally came through? Well, I made a film called Cropsy. As I was making that film about some missing kids in my hometown of Staten Island, a number of police officers, journalists, lawyers kept telling me that they thought or there was a possibility that these missing kids were somehow connected to the Son of Sam case. I, of course, being from New York, knew all about the Son of Sam case. I was fascinated by it, you know, about this supposed uh, serial killer who brought New York City literally to its knees, you know, in the 1970s, 1977. Um, so they said, oh, I think these missing kids might be connected, uh, and there actually might be a cult behind it. I thought it was all satanic panic. But then I started doing some research and I sat down with a bunch of uh, police officers and they're like, no, listen to this. Uh, and they started to go into what their beliefs were, that they had looked into this, they had investigated it, and there was definitely some truth to it. They told me to go and read the book, The Ultimate Evil by Maury Terry. Mm -hmm. I picked up the book, I brought it home and it scared the hell out of me. And I don't scare easy. Uh, I'm a debunker. And uh, this book was super fascinating. It was fascinating because of what it had covered, but then what was also fascinating was watching the writer, Maury Terry, slowly descend into madness down this rabbit hole of connections where he starts to connect like all these crimes across the country, Manson, Berkowitz, uh, Arliss Perry. And it was just, for somebody like me, who just like lives in true crime rabbit holes, this was the ultimate rabbit hole. The ultimate evil, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it was, but it was. I mean, you yeah. know, if you've ever read the book, it's, it's amazing. Well, and I think it's a, such an interesting documentary because it kind of, you know, I, I hadn't, I, I feel like I, I, I'm, you know, at least are, listen to true crime and, and read a lot about true crime. And I hadn't heard about the whole, you know, the cult angle of this. You know, I'd learned, mm -hmm. I'd heard the, the normal story of Berkowitz. Uh, and I think it was such an interesting arc of the documentary that it starts with kind of a chronicle of the, of the original Son of Sam crimes. And then you kind, it kind of goes into this, you know, essentially a biography or, or look into Maury and, and, and kind of his obsession with this case. And, you know, it, was that how it always was? Or is that just kind of how you told the story? Because kind of as he became more obsessed with the case, you kind of have to know more about him and, and the rabbit holes he went down. I think that that story is especially important for today. 
to be honest. Like, I think that 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 his story is especially prescient with where we are in this kind of global national conversation about true crime, about web sleuths, about going in and getting falling down the rabbit hole, about conspiracy. I mean, to me, his story just represents everything that we're all going through right now. And it becomes a cautionary tale about true crime. And I think that that's just really important right that right now to, to look at a story like Maury's. You know, here's a guy who spent 40 years going down the rabbit hole. You know, at some point, you know, it screwed up his relationships, you know, screwed up his work. And in some ways, it ultimately killed him. Um, and I think that, you know, it, it, be careful about going down the rabbit hole because you have to figure out how to get back out. Yeah, and you, you kind of hear about the uh, the cautionary aspect is an interesting angle because you hear about these, you know, I don't know, Reddit sleuths, is kind of, sometimes they're called, or just internet sleuths, who will do, they'll draw these connections. And if you look hard enough or kind of look at enough things, you'll find connections and then they'll, they'll be convinced of this perpetrator. And sometimes they're right. I mean, you know, credit to, we're credit to sometimes, but sometimes yeah. they completely, you know, with it, they, they draw the wrong connection and they, you know, essentially ruin someone's life. And so that's... Yeah. Well, here, I think, is an, is, it's, it's almost like you get all of that in one. Here's a guy who, who uncovered an incredible thing. Berkowitz didn't act alone, you know, and, and that's incredible that he was able to uncover that, that he had evidence to it, that there was support to it. At the same time, he took that information and kind of spiraled with it down an incredible rabbit hole where unfortunately it almost negated what he found in the beginning. So I think you get both, those, both sides of it, like you're saying, you get the success story, but you also get the, the cautionary tale. And that's why to me, he was such an interesting character. Yeah, and you almost wonder if, if he had kind of stopped at that incredible revelation, if maybe he would be remembered differently and, and the case would be remembered differently, but I think you know, you're right. I, I, I think so, I, th I, I honestly think, uh, he would have changed history, uh, you know, and, and, and like you said, you, you would, you would be like, oh yes, the story about the bullshit story about the demon dog. And, you know, when in fact it was a bunch of people, oh yeah, I know that story. Like that, that would be the conversation that we're having today. Not the, oh, I've never heard of that story before conversation. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, th this film is narrated by Paul Giamatti. How, how did you get him involved or how did, is he a, true crime nut as well or did, was that just well know, kind of... look everybody likes true crime these days <laughs> paul paul loves you know all things weird he's a very incredibly smart guy um and i think he he really did a wonderful job of embodying uh maury terry and also i think understanding how people like to go down these rabbit holes and could kind of get lost and so for this film, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Have you ever, did you correspond with uh, David Berkowitz at all? Or would, would you just, I did. You just read through? I oh, did. wow. Interesting. I wanted, um, I didn't want to ask anything about him. I only wanted to get his opinion on Maury Terry. Oh, well, that, that makes sense given the, the, the way that this uh, documentary develops. Um, I guess the, you know, last question is, I, I read your bio. You are definitely deep into true crime and, and some, some very heinous areas. So, what is your sleep ritual? How I imagine your front door looks like one of those comic uh, front doors where you just lock, 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 and then probably check all the lights. And you know, uh, I, I, you, you go into such such strange rabbit holes. Like, how do you kind of compartmentalize that with your day to day life, or do you, do you do they sometimes bleed over, and sometimes you just kind of just get obsessed with something for a bit, and, and it kind of affects your everyday life, and then you kind of move on. Yeah, I would say the latter, you know, uh, weirdly enough, I don't lock my front door. Um, you might not want to say <laughs> that's true. Not, I'm not scared. I don't lock my front door, you know. Um, uh, it, to me, they're just interesting, fascinating, fascinating stories. Uh, yes, they're dark, but I think um, in actually understanding the darkness, you can appreciate the light a lot more. And you also understand human nature a lot more. Um, you know, you find that you're less scared of things when you really go pretty far down into the darkness. That's true. I guess, if, you know, if, if you if you know what kind of what to expect, then maybe you can at least be prepared or, you know, maybe you just, you know, you have a better understanding of human nature. Yeah. And then every now and then I do something light. I have another film coming out that's about a whale called The Loneliest Whale. It's a, a 
an expedition in search of a whale. So you kind of ba balance out the, the light and the darkness. How many sailors does that whale kill? None. Oh, Amazingly none. It's about- He just, mut oh, he just mutilates them. Is that <laughs> uh, no, no, the whale has never hurt anybody as far as I know. Uh, it's a it's a whale that calls out a frequency that no other whale can hear. He's known as the loneliest whale in the world. That's, oh. And um, we went out on an expedition to try and find him. Awesome. Well, then you can look for that if you want something a little more lighthearted or look at for The Sons of Sam, A Descent into Darkness, which releases on Netflix May 5th, 2021. Uh, so thanks so much for your time, Josh. And uh, where can people find, you know, more information about you, more information about your work? Uh, you know, how can they connect with you? Um, obviously, Twitter, Instagram at Josh Zeman, J-O-S-H-Z-E-M-A-N. Um, and we'll be having a podcast coming out at the same time that takes people down the next layer into an even deeper dive on the son of Sam case. So uh, look for it. We're going to have a whole bunch of great content coming out. I will, I will definitely be looking for that. This was a, this was a, a fascinating rabbit hole. I'd, I'd love to kind of go down some other ones too. It's a, it's a very interesting docuseries. Excellent. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. That was Joshua Zeman, the director of the sons of Sam, a descent into darkness. It premieres on Netflix on May 5th, 2021. So you can check it out then just, you know, maybe leave a light on or two. It's, it's a pretty creepy documentary, but it has some very interesting things. If you like this interview, please like, and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot to make sure all my new interviews go straight to you. And as always, please go to watcherpass.com for all your movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Thank you. Thank you.